Ba, 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 da, ba. <clears throat> Sorry, I've already said intro Krim first. If you don't know Krim, he's the most exciting fucking alternative artist coming out of Ireland at the moment. I'm just going to give you an intro first because I didn't give, I gave everyone else intros, so I didn't give you an intro. Um, yeah, he's from Belfast, fucking incredible music. He's also part of XL, which is the kind of thing I fall under myself. And yeah, here he is. Hello, hello. What's How up? Are How are you? I'm good, I'm good. How are you keeping? Yeah, fucking good since I was talking to you like. 48 hours ago. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, what's the crack? Fucking what are, because you then, again, have a very unique um, story and stuff. Like, what are some things that uh, you've maybe found, like, tough to get over in order to achieve where you are? Oh. I don't, I don't, when I say that, I don't even mean, like, on, like, a, like, a, like, a promo level and shit. I just mean on your own, like, music and your own, like, life and stuff. Yeah. Um, I definitely think the thing, with up here it was definitely the people that was a difficult thing to overcome because like up here up north it's kind of a known thing like down south is so much farther ahead because up up north it's like crabs in a bucket you know if one guy's winning it's like i kind of go by a saying up here that up here is very like they want to see you win but they hate to see you winning mm, yeah. because it's like everyone's like oh yeah you're gonna make it you're gonna make it and oh i love your music and da 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 but then once you start doing numbers and you start working more, then they're like, oh, he's changed. He's not the same. And you know what I mean? They're like, fuck yeah. this guy. And everyone just kind of turns your back on you. So I Which is like, crazy because nothing's actually changed. All you've no, done like nothing at all. It's literally that like I've just been working. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's like, I feel there's just like a level of jealousy up here or something. But like, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I can't put a label on it. But I feel it was kind of getting over the fact of like having people that I know so well kind of turn around and be like, yeah, fuck this guy. You know what I mean? But like, I was very grateful to be able to find myself with the guys in XL and with Dylan and you and everyone. So like being a part of this team, I feel I can kind of isolate myself now and just like hustle. Yeah, 100%. And how, how did you overcome that? Like, because obviously losing friends and shit is like the fucking worst shit ever. Like, it's such a tough yeah. thing. Uh, especially when it's not like we get to see you every day. Like, we're not actually around you every day. We're just, like, on the internet with you. Um, so, like, how, di how did you get over that? Or what was the kind of... I don't know, to be honest. I feel it was just because, like, I have, like, a tight-ass group of friends. And it's, like, I lost so many. And then it was just, like, it was just me and my homie. But, like, I had that one homie that I've known since I was, like, fucking, what, like, 13. And I don't yeah. get him changed with that. So, like, I was chilling, to be honest. Like, I just kind of had to take it on the chin. I feel like I took a step back. But I was, like the kind of thing that like if they're not hitting on you you're doing something wrong so i was like I, I was basically just like fuck it like if they don't want to stick around that's like chilling i'll just do me and work hard you know what i mean i just i kind of kept myself busy and i sort of focused on the goal in the long run and thought like in the short run like if i lose a few people what is it i know i'm gonna fucking get to where i want to be and this is just something that has to happen you know what i mean here's actually kind of an interesting one just because i know this is something that we probably actually never talked about but it must have been kind of difficult so when you first like obviously dylan took you on or whatever and excel and that um obviously there was like a big period of like there was like nothing actually happening because everything was happening in the background of just like developing and stuff yeah I find that process of obviously just putting your faith in well dylan essentially um and like just like taking his word for it even though you know obviously only linked up like twice at that time or whatever. yeah i don't know it was kind of like it was weird because like on the first call we kind of clicked straight away and we were chatting for like five hours yeah. but i think it was like oh. well you kind of know about the stuff that was going on in the background of us stuff that we can't obviously say yeah. but like yeah, within yeah. like within like a week of us knowing each other we were thrown in the deep end and we were like look i've got to tr we've got to trust each other or we're fucked you yeah. know what i mean so i feel like kind of just like put a mad speed run on <laughs> us having to trust each other and like we were just like you know what i'll trust you if you trust me and yeah. you, you know in the long run it could have fucked us over or it could have done us very well we were fortunate enough that it came out doing us very well and yeah. i feel after that we were able to just sort of build our relationship and here we are now i guess yeah. i feel like it was weird because if the situation hadn't gone how it had normally gone it would have been a bit more sort of iffy iffy at the start you know what i mean because it's weird like you never have met this guy before he's worked on yeah. one song and he's like i want to take your vision to the next level and you're like all right you know what yeah. i mean um just i, I remember when i just I'm not, i obviously won't say it but just for context what happened was Krim and dylan uh decided to work together um say in like june and then they basically got thrown in a situation where they had to make like a really, really big decision with different fucking people. And then they were like, oh, but we don't even know each other. How are we supposed to make a decision on this thing if we don't even fucking trust each other yet? Um, which is just obviously quite a stressful thing to be put into when you're just trying to 
get to know someone. Um, it's like fucking dating someone once and then being brought around to their family and be like, oh, hey, <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> or some shit. But um, yeah, that's a fucking, that must, yeah, I, I can't even imagine like that, how that works trust wise. Yeah, I but know, I suppose a so, thing that was kind of good with that as well is like, if it weren't for Dylan, I couldn't have taken that situation forward. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't have that person to kind of watch my back and I didn't have that knowledge of the industry and like marketing and just like, he's kind of like the brains of everything. And he took me in when I, all I knew was make music and release it the same day on SoundCloud. Like there was so much that he kind of taught me. So I'm very grateful for that, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Facts. Okay. So outside of that, what, was there anything else on like just the development level or any, or even just funny things that you're like, had to go through? To I think the, the weirdest thing for me was like, adjusting from just making a song and then dropping it on soundcloud to not releasing a song for what seven months and yeah. like spending so much time making songs exporting them sending them as demos getting feedback getting them back you what about this 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 and just like yeah. going so balls deep into songs and like them being like okay we've got this here's our four-week marketing strategy what are we going to do with this and there's like it was kind of like overwhelming at the start because it was like <laughs> there's so much more to do that I didn't know you had to do because I was like your stereotypical like SoundCloud rapper you know what I mean like I knew nothing of marketing but I feel at the point now like I kind of understand a lot of it and it was cool and it's fucking easy enough for me now but like yeah. at the start like if you don't know what you're doing with marketing it's overwhelming when you have to <laughs> think about like it's like so when good. you're doing so much marketing and then it's like okay now I want you to think of unique ways to advertise yourself with content and it's like yeah. I'm like a YouTuber now, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Facts. And yeah, no, it is super draining as well, especially when all you have to think about. And the other thing I found really tough is that at the start when I was putting out music is, or like st stopped putting out as much music, was I used to make a song, put out a song, make a song, put out a song. I would love this song in the moment. I'd be like, this is the fucking best thing ever. Would put it out and it would do like maybe fucking a thousand streams or like 500 streams or something. Yeah. Or, or whatever it was at the time. Um. And then I just move on to the next one and move on to the next one when like, and then you get like introduced to that perspective of like, no, just make a lot of music and then pick what's best. And I was like, oh, this is such a weird stress. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually jump into it because it's, because it's just such a unique and interesting thing that you've done uh, for anyone that's in here. So Krim wrote and made 500 songs before he ever like really was started putting out music. So from the age of like 13 to 15, for context, he's 17 right now. Um, he made 500 songs and just like figured out his sound and stuff. What was that process like? Did like when you were doing it, did you know you were writing this many songs to get to a place, or were you just taking it day by day, or was it like this is my goal? Once I've done this, I can honestly, start. like it was at the start, it was literally just like fun because it was like how it happened was like my friend Rory, I knew since like year eight, like the first year of secondary school, he was like, yo you rap don't you and i was like yeah and he's like come to my house I, I'm, I'm making beats just like let's make some music and i was like i i got you and uh we just sort of like he just started making beats and i would write stuff and i was i wasn't like doing singing shit or anything like that yeah. i was doing like boom bop and i was doing like that super heavy underground like xxx tentation tentation harper uh freddie dread type of shit where you're just yeah. like you know what I mean? Like heavy, heavy shit. Like the body, the body. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, like, like literally, like Suicide Boys and uh, Ramirez and all them. Like I didn't like think about like melodic shit until maybe I was like fifteen, like maybe two yeah. years into it. Like I think I made about it was about five hundred of them, and I think of those five hundred, there was maybe two songs that I sang in. Yeah, nice. like it, but like there's a thing that like I feel that just has to be done, and it's like you got to learn how to boom bap before you trap. Yeah, because exactly. it's like, yeah, like if, if you throw yourself in and you don't learn how the OGs did it and you don't learn how to rap and how to flow on a beat and you throw yourself in and try to rap on a trap beat, you're just, you're not going to have a flow. You know what I mean? You're not going to develop your own voice and your own flow and your own idea of how to like, just sort of ride a beat. You know what I mean? So I think the other really, really important thing, and it, it definitely fucking shows in your music. And I would like to say it shows in mine too. I don't know if that's subjective, but fucking when you come in through an appreciation for rap or like proper hip hop or boom bap, you know, then like, you know, you know, the importance on lyrics and how real and like important and powerful lyrics can be. And how, yeah. uh, whereas the one thing, the reason I kind of never really focused with emo music or like the likes of that when I first heard it was because I was like, this is so boring lyrically. Like you're saying the same shit. 
and I'll, even even like say it took like so obviously someone like little Pete for me to start like enjoying it because I was like wow his lyrics are obviously really powerful and really good um but yeah so I think like anyone who comes through some sort of a lyrical background whether that is k-pop or doing back or whatever it is and um, you you then understand and transfer that style of lyric writing to pop music or emo music because it's the same with pop music there's so many people I know that like are pop writers but have like even as you take John Gibbons for example, like he has a deep, deep, deep appreciation for hip hop and so into hip hop. So when yeah. he comes ranked for certain shit, you can see that he holds people to a certain standard because even though it, like you would not think it from the music because it's so like EDM and pop, um, that you hold people to a certain standard because of the lyrics. And I think that is yeah. definitely really, really important. Oh no, yeah, for sure. I feel the lyrics are like one of the main reasons people resonate with songs. Like you can admire a song musically and think, wow, that's great, but like relatability sales you know what i mean like yeah. people who hear a lyric and it just hits them they're like yeah yeah and it's what keeps you coming back and it's what like i think it's truly what the moments are created around when you're having a conversation with someone well anyway anyone that i uh fucking ill hippie dylan my friend he he has a really funny thing where he he rates people like he like he his like trust levels of people is rated on like what fires they fuck with so he says if someone's favorite fire if, if someone quotes their favorite bar to him and it's like a Drake bar he's like I don't really trust them because like Drake's level of lyricism compared to like Flatterbush Zombies or something yeah not there so he's like hmm, if you don't appreciate good lyrics I don't really know what I fuck with you <laughs> yeah <laughs> which is like a funny thing but um yeah no that that's a, so with so yeah sorry when you were doing the 500 songs um did you have like was there a goal with them or was it just solely self-discovery like did you think about putting those songs out or did you put those songs out or? honestly like at first I was like maybe in the first year I was like low-key embarrassed to be like admitting I was making music you know what I mean like yeah. I didn't want to put anything out I was just like oh it's just a bit of fun and then when I kind of realized like I had a bit of a sauce for it I was like yo maybe I could do something with this you know what I mean so I was just working 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 and like as well as like my appreciation for hip-hop like I listened to a lot of bands back then like I was listening to like um what's some examples bring me the horizon radiohead title fight uh citizen like post-hardcore punk emo yeah. bands and like knuckle puck uh the story so far like just pop punk bands but i never yeah. thought about the crossover between hip-hop and those genres but like yeah. so that's why i was more into hip-hop but then because that's what was buzzing at the time it was like 2016 2018 you know what i mean that was like the rise of like underground soundcloud music but then when i came across like gbc and like that they're kind of upcoming i was like hold on this kind of pop punk emo like hip-hop shit kind of works i might try this yeah. Yeah. So, like, I just started experimenting with it. I think it was, like, after we made those 500 songs, me and Rory kind of parted ways, and I started working on my own shit with the emo shit, and he was working, he moved into, like, DJing with techno and things like that. Ooh. And uh, I just started working on my own song, learning how to mix myself, and then I think the first kind of, like, emo trap song I put out was Not The Same. I don't know if you remember that one, but that was, like, yeah, yeah that was, like, the first one I put out. It was, like, super juice world, but it wasn't kind of where I wanted it. And then I feel from there, you can kind of see, like, my gradual progression from like emo trap to like more rock authentic music yeah. like through my song cloud and i feel like today i'm kind of at a point where i'm like like this is crim like i know yeah. who i am and what the oh, music is now. very fucking like evident sound and I, and I still think there is like an element of like hip-hop in that like you can i don't know i just feel like there is some bits where like you are like have a faster flow or you just have some like standout lyrics and you can see that there definitely is a very hip-hop influence in it but um but I also think, like, one of my favorite things about your music is the way that, you, yes, you're an emo artist, and yes, you're, like, in the pocket you're in, but you definitely sound like a fucking lead vocalist of a band as well, and I think that's probably why I like the music so much, is that... Yeah, thank it, you. I it appreciate your thought. ...a fucking band, and, which is why I think it, it resonates with a lot more people than just being, yeah, an emo artist or an underground fucking trap artist or whatever. Yeah, I think that's, like, my favorite thing when people say to me, it's like, you sound like you could be an emo vocalist because for me like there's a thing I've always said and I said it to Dylan the first time I met him when he was like what's the vision for the music and it was I don't want to sound like a hip-hop fan who's heard a Blink-182 song I want to yeah. sound like an emo vocalist who likes trap music yeah you know what I mean and that's like when people say that and say that's evident because like sometimes I listen and I'm like I don't know if that's coming through or not like when people point that out to me it's just it's so dope to hear yeah yeah no but Sick. Well, that's fucking... I think we'll leave that there. Thank you very, very much for coming on. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no, where's it all? Um, yeah, fucking... Anyone who fucking is in here who doesn't know Crim, go check out Crim. It's fucking fire. <laughs> and yeah.
Yes. Have a, have Thank you, Mom. Take care of yourself. Peace. Peace. Right. We're going to have John in next. I'm just going to run for a piss, so I'll be two seconds.